Jim Jeffries is early, so it's good to see you, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been a while, man. I haven't been in this room for a long time. Yeah. A lot it used to be a completely different staff. Yeah, I last, was... time you, last time you were here, I was probably sitting next to you. Yeah, I was. I, I think you were sitting in this chair last time I was here, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the old gym chair. It is, yeah. Yeah. Now I, now I know how many years it takes to go around to that chair, so I'm looking forward exactly. to it. Exactly. I'm, I'm like failing in a half circle. <laughs> so in 2020, man, that's what's going to happen. Yep. Um, it's good to see you. Uh, how long are you in town for? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing Fallon tonight, and then I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm driving away. But I, I don't I don't I think my Fallon airs on Friday, but I'm recording it tonight. So. Yeah, they do Thursdays for uh, for Friday, uh, and your show uh, season two is uh, the Jim Jeffries show. Season two premieres next Tuesday, March twenty seventh. At ten thirty, they seem to kind of let you do what you want to do on that show. They do, they do. They they let me do what they want to do, what I want to do. But they also Comedy Central make me do everything. It's like it's like all those other shows, like um, Oliver or Samantha Bee, the Daily Show or whatever. They they have people doing field pieces, and I did my field piece for um, for the pilot, which we, we it was a really fun field piece. We went out to Holland. I don't know if you know this. They have a character called Black Pete. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. At Christmas, they do blackface as a, as a bit of fun, right? And right. not just one or two people; like everyone does blackface. It's and a celebration. The, yeah, and then paints their lips red and stuff like that. And it's meant to be like Santa's helper, and he's just like a guy who hangs out. And so we did that field piece, and they really liked it. And then Comedy Central, were like, great, you'll do all your own field pieces. So, <laughs> no. so I, can, I can do what I want. But I've just gotten back from Europe, and we did like I don't know, maybe ten or twelve different field oh, pieces. My God. Do you have to do one for every episode? Yeah, well, almost every episode. We interview on the ones that we, you know, we didn't have field pieces for. We did like, we went to Israel and did the thing on circumcision. Just met like the one guy who's really anti cutting off the end of your cock in Israel. Cause you went all the way to Israel for that? I was gigging there anyway. Oh, wow. I was doing a show. That's in. great because you come in central pace for your flights. Yeah. That's how a comedian <laughs> would do it. <laughs> you fucking book your gigs around where they want to shoot field pieces. Yeah, and they yeah, pay yeah. for the like, flights. Literally, the field pieces come after my gigs. Like, you just go, all right, we're in Stockholm. What's, what's, what's happening there? And there's nothing worth field piecing in Stockholm. Uh -huh. Oh, the healthcare is really good and the women are beautiful. <laughs> Let's see if we can fucking rock some story out of this. So you stay for an extra day or two, you do that, and then you move on. To the no, next we just do city. it. We do it the morning before the shows. We go oh, around. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, we bash them out, man. Have you seen the, the circumcision protesters here in the States? N have they been? No. Oh, my God. I had them on when I was doing the night show. Yeah. I had them up. They're like, uh, they're, they wear all white. Yep. Except they have a big blood stain on their white pants where they're. This is on. what we do. We yeah, had okay. this guy, the white pants with the blood stain, and then he just stands around yeah. and just yells at people about having their. He was angry with me. I'm circumcised, but I got my son circumcised, and he got really angry at me for doing that. Like, like basically called me a child mutilator, and I am, but I don't agree with with the that. terminology. You yeah. don't like the terminology. No, I've mutilated him in other ways. I've, <laughs> I, I've cut his face up if he's if he's misspoken. Right. You know what I mean? But I, I, I don't believe that what I did to his dick was wrong. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no. I wish I was uncircumcised though. I've talked about this. I wish I was uncircumcised. You, 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 I, we've had this discussion. You reckon it would feel better? Or yeah, the sex would feel better. But how? What, how do you? How do you, first of all, okay, so you know because people have said it or whatever, yeah. everyone's only got the one dick. You really have to meet like one person who's got the, uh, who's had the dick, right. had a bit of sex, then had the dick cut off and then had a bit more sex, which is plenty of people have had circumcisions in their yeah. 20s. Um, and then just ask how they went. But do, do you really, like how much are you masturbating a week? Usually once a day, but I made myself start using lube now just because my <laughs> because my dick was like a, just a twisted root. And right. I couldn't feel anything; it was just numb. Okay, but you're still doing it once a day. Why do you need to step that sensation up? Like, why do you have to start going? Oh, I need this to be better. Because yes. sometimes I don't even want to do it. Plus, if you why do you do it then? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I, I, I ask myself that a lot. I'm a once a day. I'm at least a once but a day. If you were if you were uncircumcised and you were doing it once a day. You still wouldn't be, where would you be saving your sensitivity? My it's sex would be, I just think you'd be more sensitive. You've had it, he had it done as, an, as a young adult. Yeah, I was 19. You were 19, why did you yeah. get it done? Well, I had a medic, uh, my, my foreskin didn't roll uh. back. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the right. whole thing. Yeah, my uncle had the same thing. It's like, it's just. Which, why would you want to take the risk? 
Like, just get it done when you're a baby. You don't Ex- even have to. Exactly. Get it done no when you're. There's no loss. Like, and, and how do you feel now that you've had the. the amazing. Dick? Yeah, the dick stand is nice. It's great. Girls but it's in, different, though. Girls it, enjoy looking at it now, I assume. That's, that's the thing. The, that there's it, an aesthetic thing about it that girls, like, the, a lot of girls think it's gross. This is the thing. There's never been a sex toy with a foreskin. That's all you need to know. They've never had a dildo and gone, put the foreskin on. <laughs> the, the women might enjoy the foreskin. That's yeah. a good point. There's a lot never of been girls one. think it's gross. They do, but you had a medical condition where his dumb dick skin wouldn't come all the way down. You have to so it, it looked like somebody putting on a shirt that was too small. That's exactly what it, it looked like. It right. didn't work like foreskin is supposed to, so you kind of had to get it fixed. <laughs> yeah. The but analogy I, of a shirt that was so small. <laughs> because it's, like, <laughs> it's never the hole in the neck that's so small. It's the rest of the body. Like, you're talking about a person with a gigantic head. Yeah, and then just <laughs> the fucking top of the head goes through yeah. the shirt and not the rest of the you fucking could, head. Yeah, you could see the top of my head. Like, you see my hair kind of almost but no it's not happening yeah so yeah. you needed to get it done medically some guys just do it because they they get sick of the foreskin Rocco yeah. Sofredi did it I heard he uh, regretted it oh the uh, you know the porn star Rocco yeah, Sofredi yeah, yeah. No, he used to be my favorite porn star yeah he was great right him Nacho this, it was re- it, that was an era in the 90s when I used to do a terrible joke and this is you know I, I don't know if I, I could still do this joke now but it, it used to be like Rocco Sofredi is my favorite porn star and people used to go, why do you like, a, why is your favorite porn star a male? And I go, because sometimes when you're watching him have sex with a woman, your brain actually goes, she might die. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, I don't do jokes like that anymore, but that that was a fun thing back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> have you found, though, because <laughs> way back then. <laughs> now, have you gotten to a point? It was a, a por- different time. Have you, do, you, do you actually worry? Because uh, you know, as a comic, you're pretty, you said whatever you wanted to say. Do you, do you start to worry? Like, all right, fuck, I got to be a little. Well, no, just, well. Uh, Obviously, um, okay, because before with stand up, you have plausible denial where you're going, Well, obviously, that's a joke, and I don't mean that, I don't want anyone to get hurt or anything yeah. like that, you know what I mean? And it's something outrageous that you say now, even when you're doing a comedy show, if it's news and fact based, you can't say anything to that level on the account that because all of a sudden, now what I'm saying is fact factual or can actually be quoted, where before, comic, comedy, stand-up comedy can't really be quoted, because you're going to go, that was obviously a joke. And even though these other things are jokes, and even things that you say in here, like I've said a lot of rubbish in here, you go, well, it's the, that's why I, I'm not a Trump fan, but I, I, they always pull up those clips of him on Stern saying something, and yeah. I'm like, no, fuck that, man, that's what people do on that show. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna condemn the guy because he said something about a beauty pageant or something, or even, even say that that's a fact that he did these things that he said on the show. He's trying know? to impress Howard. He's just trying to impress yeah. Howard. You yeah. know, he's just trying. But then, like him on the bus with Billy Bush, it's like, yeah, he did that. That's a private moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if he, I would be more confident that he didn't do that if they, if they, like they're in front of the camera. Sure. If they're in front of the camera. I go, oh, he's just being an asshole. But on the bus where he's like, where's my ticket? Tacs. <laughs> You're like, no, nah, he did that. And he a tic tac is an awful. It does nothing for your breath. So it does small. nothing for your breath. It makes your fucking. It just makes your mouth dry. Yeah. They're terrible tic tacs. And it's also, and it's just, it makes a rattle. Like everyone knows you're conscious of your, <laughs> of your, of your breath. It's like everywhere. I I, remember, I was once with a, a, a mate of mine when I was a, when I was about uh, maybe I was ten or something. You know, you had that friend that just shoplifted constantly. Mm-hmm. Sure. Just couldn't help himself. Was always shoplifting. I had this one mate. And, he, and we were in the store and he was doing his shoplifting and I could never do it because I just, the, my parents would kill me and the guilty conscience and all that. Anyway, he stole a, you know, like a value pack of Tic Tacs. It's like 10 of them, like wrapped in cellophane, just, you know, like a thing, right? <laughs> and he shoved it, he shoved that down his pants leg. And then as we're leaving, uh, the security goes, hey, stop. I want to check your pockets. And he goes, I don't got nothing in my pockets. And he takes a step. <laughs> 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 and he's like, are you kids come back there? I remember running away from the supermarket just... <laughs> <laughs> so, kids, if you're going to shoplift candy, don't make a Tic Tacs. Yeah, right, you steal the, quiet shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you got into it with Piers Morgan, too, which, uh, which I think... That kind of went uh, everywhere. People talked. It did, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you dislike him, or did you just I, in that moment? I'll tell you what. No, I do dislike him, but... Well, what was it, what was it about? Yeah, well, it, was, it was about him saying it wasn't a Muslim band. This was like the week that that oh. Trump had said this band, that band, this band, like this, the these countries, these, yeah. these countries can't come in. And yes, it wasn't a Muslim band because his argument was 
that there's other countries that have Muslims and they're not having problems, uh, travel bans, because it's not a Muslim ban. And I'm like saying, well, that's like saying if you make a few, because because the people always use the argument that you're trying to ban guns and it's like gun controllers and gun bans. So maybe I should have been more eloquent and say, well, it's Muslim control <laughs> rather than a Muslim ban, because he is right. It wasn't a complete Muslim ban. But I'll tell you what really happened there. I, over the years, at times, I have stirred up Pierce Morgan on Twitter for no apparent reason. <laughs> I haven't met him. I have, I have, like, if he said a tweet, I've tried to upset him and write some stupid little thing or something like that. Anyway, I had no idea. I, I, was, I was doing the Bill Maher show, and so I sent out a tweet that was, like, um, as benign as, hey, everyone, I'm on the Bill Maher show at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or whatever. Tune in tonight, right? And he wrote underneath it, and I didn't know he was the other guest, I'll be sitting six feet away, bring your A-game. And I thought, if I get the chance to take a pot shot at this cunt, I'm going to take it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so I was already a little bit riled up before that all happened. I thought, if I get an opportunity, I'm going to tell him to fuck off. Yeah. And he did He did one thing, like I was being a bit childish, just sort of just yelling <laughs> over him and all that type of stuff. But he did one thing that was stupid with comics where he went, oh, come on now, Jim, you're losing your crowd. And I knew the crowd were enjoying it. So I just yeah. went, am I losing you? And they went, <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, that, and then it was like, all right, this is game on. I can say whatever I want. Right, I got him now. Cut, you know what I mean? Yeah, you never want to say that if it's going well, you're losing your crowd, especially if they're laughing and having fun. You're like, uh, no. So do you guys talk? <laughs> do you guys talk after the show? Well, afterwards, they made us take photos, and I just, I just put my arm around him for like the group photo, and I whispered, "He's a bit of fun, isn't it, Pierce?" You know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> like that, right? But and he's since commented on that, saying, "Oh, he was all hugs and smiles afterwards," but. You know, I look. I what I think he is. I think he's a, a contrarian. I think he just likes doing. I, I think he likes being that villain that people all tell off or, or whatever. So I try not to give him too much power. But I'm sure he's happy we're talking about him right I now. I do. En- I enjoy. I, I love having him on the show because no matter what he's talking about, if I don't agree with it or if I agree with it, which is you know, forty sixty. I don't disagree with him. Me and him on gun control have got a very similar thing. Yeah. You know? It's fun to watch him riling people up, though. Cause I like, know. Yeah, I love that he's the only guy that's like, he's riling everybody up by talking about how much we need gun control. And then he's riling everybody up again by supporting Trump on stuff. It's like he doesn't, yeah, yeah, he's not yeah, yeah. loyal to a you side. Don't know, he's just yeah, trying yeah. To... And, and that, that was my whole point. You only like Trump because you're on the Celebrity Apprentice and you enjoy the fact that a good friend of yours is the president. And that was that was my point. Now, I also think, and I, I, know, I know this might be silly of me, because this is before Trump and everything like that. I think he didn't like me. Because he always considered him to be the foreign guy who talked about gun control. Mm-hmm. And then when I had that piece go viral, he got a little jealous of, oh, there's now another foreign person talking about gun control. And I think, right. I think that irked him a little. Do you get shit talking about America? I know they give peer shit. You don't even live, you're not even from America. They yeah, give all, you, day, all day, all day. I love that though. <laughs> that, that I do enjoy that you, you're not from here, go home. And I, look, I have... In my mind, the moral high ground that I I make a good living, I pay a shitload of fucking taxes. taxes it's yeah. like fuck you. I, I, they don't take my tax money if you don't want to. You know what I mean? And and also, you know, between me and you and everyone listening, I'm, I I should be an American citizen before the end of the year. Oh wow, that's great. That's so awesome. so I, now, I don't know what their response is going to be after that. Was there that- any was there any part of you that was like? I don't know if I really want to go this deep into politics because once you you know you start the show on Comedy Central, it's yeah. like now this becomes your thing. Yeah. And whereas before, for the most part, the word on Jim Jeffries was if you know him, it's like oh yeah, love I Jim Jeffries, he's the I, man. I, yeah. And now there's half the audience going like fuck that guy. Yeah, it used to be on like forums like oh this guy's great, he's fun, blah, blah, blah. he did this stupid thing with a porn star on the Opie Anthony show or whatever, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> like stupid, <laughs> stupid shit we used to do here. And now it is uh, a bit more split with fuck that guy, the li- libertad cuck, which I was, <laughs> you, you know, being called a liber- and it, But the, the funny, well, not the funny, one of the, the uh, more odd things I've had to experience with doing this show is, is I don't have an opinion on everything. You know, when a news story happens, I used to watch news stories like this and be like, 
Huh, all right, well, I wonder how that will play out. Now I have to be on TV and give an opinion. Right. And so that's a different thing. So what do you have to do, kind of read into it a little bit more or actually just kind of think, like, how would I feel about this if I gave a yeah, shit? Yeah, exactly, exactly. With some things you've got to go, how would I feel about this? Like, you know, and, and then you start giving a shit because it used to be I watched maybe an hour of news a day and now we just have in the office we have news playing 24 hours a day and we have, like, multiple TVs in each room playing all the different channels so we're not just being filtered one yeah, yeah, thing yeah. into us constantly. So so we we are listening to both sides and that stuff. But I try on the show to, like, um, you know, I'm fairly left-wing, but I found out that I'm nowhere near as left-wing as many people are. I'm not even close right. to how some people are. Because, like, things like... Uh, like, 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 we did a piece on like kids wanting to dress up as that Hawaiian Disney character and people Moana. getting it. Moana, oh, right. and and the they were demo- saying it was cultural appropriation. Absolutely, yes. yeah, because and I don't agree with that. I'm like, like, fuck off, let the kid dress like Moana. That's how I feel, it's a big kids right? Move, yeah, yeah. So th- there's there's certain little things like that where I'm like, no, and then I'm you know even on like we're, we're trying to write a piece at the moment about how. Um, what sports transgender people should be allowed to play. Like if you identify as a woman and you've had the sex change, should you be allowed to compete against women? And I'm like, in some things I'm like, sure. Chess. But then, but then in boxing, I'm like, no nah. way. <laughs> but then, then, then I get, I got some writers on my staff who are very left wing who are like, no, because once you take the hormone, your bone density changes and you this changes and you that changes. They, and all stop and I'm it. Like, it does not change that much. And Rogan had a good point about ligaments. Yeah. You're born with male ligament. It's stop. It doesn't change that much. It does not change enough to compete physically against other women. But that's also, there's things in life that you have to go, all right, I've done this in my life, therefore I. I can't do certain other things, right? So me personally, they're saying they're taking the drugs and they have to compete. I've taken a shitload of cocaine. Therefore, I'm not allowed to compete in the Olympics either because I wouldn't pass the test, right? So right. there's, there's right. choices you make. But, but I don't for a second believe that anyone is cutting their dick off so they can win a gold medal. That's not no, like that. Like, right. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, was, I wasn't doing good as a man, but I have an idea. Yeah. I'm going to get that medal. <laughs> I'm getting that. You don't have a dick, though. I know, but I got the medal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a dickless medal guy. Who needs a woman, dick? woman. Who needs a dick when you have a gold medal? <laughs> yeah, but it's crazy how people get so radical about that. Like, if you if you, if you you even have an opinion, like, I'm not sure about that. They fucking... Yeah, I, my, and I found out that my opinion personally on it is it's a case by case thing you know there's certain sports and there's certain things and it's like it, 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 and each person has to be evaluated on on themselves like I shouldn't be competing in any boxing match either and I'm still a man right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't do well <laughs> like I'd probably die there'd be something if they ran tests on me they'd see that I'm not appropriate for this <laughs> for this sport for one reason or another yeah you shouldn't be competing <laughs> I watch women fight their 115 pound strawweights, right. and I'm like, I know that that woman could could uh, could damage me and kick the shit out of me. I'm of a 145 pound guy. I would lose that fight because I, I just know I would lose it. But so could any man on that card. Like everybody on that card could kick the shit out of any of us. They're well, professional yeah, the, fighters, right? Yeah, yeah. I I I'm, I'm well. I met Manny Pacquiao <laughs> once. I think I was doing like, like uh, Adam Carolla or something. And the other the other guest was Manny Pacquiao, and it's like, the guy's a midget. Right, it's, it's a he is a little fella. It's a little tiny midget, and yeah. I'm like, and like your uh, writers would not be happy that you're using the word midget. That's true. Yeah, your writers would be upset with you. A yes. little <laughs> tiny Asian fella, and I, I look at him like, if he even just slightly sort of looked me the wrong way, I think oh, I could take this cut. Yeah, right. You know, and you'd be I, wrong, very wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah. and not only very could wrong. You, and you could hit him as hard as you wanted, and he wouldn't flinch. Do you do you ever, do you ever have Rob O'Neill on the show? Do you ever have sure. him in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so Ro- Rob come did my TV show, and I, I sort of I party a little bit with Rod every now and again. He came out and hung out with me in Vegas and stuff. And there's something about I was for the people who are hearing this first. Rob's the guy who shot Bin Laden, yep. and then he was uh, SEAL Team Six. Whenever I'm in a bar with Rob, and Rob drinks, he just got kicked off a plane recently. Yes, he did. He drinks, like in the office, he drinks. (laughs) Jim and I both 
took the stance that he should be allowed to drink as much as he wants to on any plane that he goes Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Completely. He should just treat the stewardesses however you want to treat them and then remind everybody that you shot Bin Laden. Yes, yeah, exactly. Done. Done. Exactly. You know, you know what I did for the airplane industry? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're all comfortable again. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, yeah. So you're with yeah. him in Vegas. You're worried about me being on a plane? Didn't I jump off a helicopter that crashed <laughs> right. into Bin Laden's compound? Yeah. Right. Like, don't worry about me if there's an emergency. <laughs> I'll, get off, I'll get off the plane yeah. just fine. I'm going to get all of us off the plane. Anyway, so so whenever I'm drinking with him, I, I like... And if someone, you know how like someone bumps into you and spills your drink, you're always like, oh, don't worry about it. And the person's like, oh, okay. If someone's even like slightly rude to me and I'm staying with Rob and I'm drunk, I feel like I should start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I really I really should. Like I haven't started an adult fight. Right? It's, I, haven't, I haven't been in a fight since high school, but I feel like if you're I'm winning. going to. You're going to win. Yeah, now's my time. You're going to do it. Now yeah. like, he, Rob's got to have some type of Vulcan grip where oh he just God. kills a person. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in SEAL Team 6, they go over hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? And, and also, the weird thing is Rob's bodyguards are other SEAL Team 6s. They're really? like other guys who are just retired who just go around to him with his talks and because yeah. ISIS are looking for him or something. So he's Yeah, he's a, he's a legit target. Definitely. He's yeah. a guy they'd like to get their hands on if they could. Yeah. Yeah, and so Definitely. the guys are hanging. So it's like whenever you're drinking with him, it's always like another two SEAL Team 6 guys. So you're like, I, but this is what I don't get. You got SEAL Team 6. What are the other five SEAL teams doing? Why do we always <laughs> Why do we always rely on six? Yeah. He's like number five catering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have some yeah. shit job. <laughs> yeah. They're going like, oh, we have a big mission. Well, it's not that big of a mission. SEAL Team 3 is going in. It's, uh, uh, it's yeah, really so, not going to be yeah. tough. <laughs> SEAL Team 3 is just the transgender boxes. <laughs> no. <laughs> that really sucks. It used to be, if you said you were a Navy SEAL guy, it would be like, oh my God, you must know everything. But now if you're like, are you on SEAL Team 6? And they're like, no. It's like, oh, so you're just... You're just Navy SEAL. He's a SEAL. That's not, nah. not yeah, a they've got, one of the guys in, in the SEAL Team 6 that he always hangs out with is obviously being shot in the fucking hip or something. And he's always he walks with a cane in his days of being a He's assault. a bodyguard? No, he's just oh. one of his mates that comes and hangs out every now and again. And he walks with like a cane. And I always think, and like, he's slow, you know, like it's a proper limp. It's not just like I've hurt my ankle. It's a real sure. like something's happened. Yeah. And I'm still thinking that guy could still probably... Probably kick the shit out of me, even with that that shitty leg. Oh, for sure. Even with that shitty leg, he'd, he'd just he'd, balance himself. He'd, he'd grab it with the other around. leg yeah. and fucking swing that yeah. fucking leg into me. Yeah, because he's just licensed to carry a firearm, and he'd pull out his gun and point it. <laughs> <laughs> get away from me. But yeah, a, a, a SEAL Team Six member that needs a cane to walk is not an injured guy. It's a guy with a weapon. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like that. Wait, what SEAL Team is it? Does it stop at six? Do we go to seven? I don't think. If we do, seven. we've never heard it. Don't forget, we didn't know SEAL Team Six for a long time. That's true. Now there might be a seven. I don't know what six means, or if there's four, if, if there's just SEALs and SEAL Six. Maybe there's not five other ones. I don't That's know. why it was like what an area fifty two was it? Area fifty, area 50 one. 51. Area, area, area fifty one. Yeah. So that's we all know about it. We all, we all know about it. Right. you got to fucking move that. Yeah. That's the least secretive place in the world. You no, can drive I'm, right there. Yeah, it's Area 51 is yeah. where they keep all the aliens and shit. Now, which makes me wonder, is there another 50 other areas? They're right. the secret ones. Right. And what are we stockpiling in those ones? Just blankets? 51 <laughs> right. is the hack area. That's where everybody knows, oh, that's what we think all shit the, is, but the, it's not. All the aliens are in Area 17. Nobody ever talks about Area yeah, where's 17. where's Area 17? Right. Is that just in Burbank it next is. to Universal Studios? <laughs> right. It's in the suburbs. <laughs> well, there was a guy who wrote a book about it, and he said that after the Roswell crash, now again, this is just this guy, that they were shipped off to a military base um, I've made you know, McCarran Air Force, one of the an Air Force base or something, and that all this the uh, UFO stuff is stored under foreign technologies, because uh, this way the press can't get into them and look at them. And technically, it is foreign technology. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's or foreign weaponry. There, there, it's it's stored under something that the press knows that they can't access because it's classified. Look, we have to look. I I was always a believer in all that type of stuff, and I do believe there's there's a smart, intelligent life on. Uh, there's definitely aliens. There's definitely dumb bugs. Mm -hmm. On some a eh, on some dust bug or a fucking maggot in some fucking planet, right? Sure. Of course, there's things happening in other planets. Whether they have UFOs or something, I don't know. But I've decided they haven't visitors. I decided there's no Bigfoot. There's no fucking Loch Ness monster. There's none of that shit. You think the Earth's flat? No. Okay. The Earth's <laughs> round. He's going okay. against all conspiracies. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 and I tell you why. Because I used to sort of believe. I wanted to believe in all those things that there was different things, but. I 
can't fucking have a piss in an alleyway without someone taking a video of me. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? And putting on your like, Jim Jeffries having a piss in an alleyway. You, right. know, you know what I mean? I went yeah. to a strip club and people started taking photos of me having lap dances and you know you meant to have your camera. And it's like, we, everyone's carrying a camera all the fucking time. That's right. You, we used to be able to pass off this grainy footage of a Bigfoot and go, oh, maybe that's a, what did I just see? And it's like, nah. nah so you don't nah. think any aliens on Earth? No, there's, well, there's there's no aliens. There's no definitely no Bigfoots. No Bigfoots. Well, that guy's name. I think his name was Robert Johnson. The guy that did the 1967 footage where he's kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. running, and then the, the surgeon's photo of Loch Ness monster. He admitted was a fake on his yes. deathbed. No, no ghosts. No ghosts. No ghosts. So when we die, we just go in the ground. Yes. Yes. Yes, completely. Yes. Uh, but if we are a ghost, if we if there are ghosts, we're not visible. No one's got. You, you go on YouTube and go uh, 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 footage of ghosts. It's always like a photo from the 1950 that's overexposed. Where luckily you got like you know it's the same as Jesus in a tortilla. Right. You can yeah. sometimes get a bit of luck where the burn marks look <laughs> like fuck. There's that one where Jesus looks like a dog's asshole. You ever seen that picture? <laughs> oh. the, d- someone pull me up J- Jesus dog dog asshole picture. And then you'll you'll see like like dog so, bum they call it. <laughs> dog, so don't be disrespectful. Dog bum. There we are. There we are. That uh, dog. Wow. That dog's asshole looks like Jesus. It does. My God. Maybe he's the second coming. It really does look like Jesus. It does. I see it. Maybe his his. And you can almost see his hands coming. too. Yeah, his hands. He's standing there. He's blessing the. He's, he's blessing <laughs> everyone. Holy shit. <laughs> who? How did? It, how did that guy come up with that? Now I have two reasons to worship that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got he's got feet and he's got the arms. He's got the cloaks and that that dog's asshole does look like Jesus. Wow, yeah. it certainly does. Yeah, but so so I mean, so if we see a moldy stain in a fucking house in Mexico and people start praying to it, it's just I don't know. There are full. Seasons of television devoted to being ghost hunters, and there is zero compelling evidence on any of them. Zero. Well, it's also like finding Bigfoot. Who is watching Finding Bigfoot? Like today is the day <laughs> because, like, if they find Bigfoot, they'll release it. It would have leaked. The... Yeah, they, so? yeah, they're not going to go. Well, hold on to this for season four. I don't know. I've been watching a uh, Tupac and Biggie's murder uh, the series on USA, and I'm pretty sure by the end they'll figure out who did it. Well. Uh, <laughs> It's okay, you took a bite. Yeah, there's no big one. I would did you... take a bite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's only a bagel. You can't hide. I was in Mexico recently. I was in like a fucking village, right? Like this is a real slummy place. And someone's like, Jim Jeffries, gun control, right? <laughs> now, if I can't do that, I'm only mildly famous. Fuck two packs living somewhere. Right. Two packs not living anywhere. Elvis. Well, Elvis, maybe. Why? Well, How? Because he'd be fucking 80. I mean, I guess, but... It's placed in South America, the Nazis hid. He could be down there, Brazil, Argentina. You think the Nazis hid Elvis? No, but I mean, there's places to hide. But could the Nazis also, have hid Elvis? he just need to lose some weight, and he would have looked a lot different. A lot different. Shaved his hair. I, yeah. I want, I, want Elvis, I want Elvis to still be... <laughs> so Elvis, you're not, you're not ready to give up on Elvis. There's, there's, a guy called, there's a guy called Jesse Presley, who, and there was a, uh, there's a girl who said that she was related to him, and there was DNA and all that type of stuff, and... There was a guy that they thought was Elvis. I'd like Elvis to be uh, alive. I would. I, I, wrote, I wrote a movie spec that I tried to sell years ago called Gavin Has Left the Building. And the idea behind Gavin Left the Building, it was like a new take on that movie, Dave. Remember Dave? Yeah, of course I remember sure. Dave. Yeah, it was basically like what happened to the guy who was the, the, the body double of Elvis, the guy who wore the sunglasses, had the scarf, and like when Elvis went out that door, he was the one who walked to the limo at that right. door. And then after he died, because there, 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 most of the shots when we used to see Michael Jackson with the, like sur- with the, mask the surgical yeah. mask on was because that was the body double. And there was a guy that just used to have to keep on getting plastic surgery. So to he, keep so, up with So him. his eyes were keep to keep up <laughs> wow, with Wow, I didn't realize that. And that's why we always had the surgical mask because all these people always have someone leaving a different building or something like that. So there's this, there's an, speaking of Elvis, there's an, and impersonators and stuff, there's an incredible documentary on Netflix called Orion. And it's about this guy who I guess was like, they tried to make him into a pop star. It was just this guy who sounded like Elvis. Oh, yeah, he does sound Did like Elvis. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he wanted to be a pop star so bad, and all he wanted to do was sing professionally, and he just wasn't getting any breaks and wasn't getting any breaks until somebody said, he didn't really look like Elvis, but somebody said, you Let's can put his audio. You sing just like Elvis, and if we put like a Lone Ranger mask on you, 
we can kind of market you as maybe, the second coming. Maybe oh, he's so maybe on Elvis. Maybe he's bringing out albums. And I mean, it was such a I, the way like his his like, life is like like just so. Let's, let's hear him sing "Unchained Melody," a great Elvis cover. Wow, he's great. Yeah, yeah, he does sound like Elvis. But he didn't want to be this Elvis guy. Right. He wanted to be himself. But this is all the, the only way he gets That's how famous. he sings. Yeah, yeah. Are you <laughs> still mine? I love that. That's one of my favorite videos on YouTube is Fat Elvis singing this while the guy holds the mic in his face. <laughs> he's absolutely obese and he's sweating. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome video. All right. Yeah, I always, I always think that about like Elvis... Elvis died. I'm one year older than when Elvis died now. Wow. <laughs> so, so I always look at like, I'm holding it together, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm they, doing that better than Elvis did at the end. When you're out with these t t uh, <laughs> SEAL Team 6 guys, uh, do they? Do you just listen to stories that they tell? Do, of course. Like, there's no like. Well, how do you tell a story with t uh, Seam? Uh, yeah, but they, uh, they, they also like they they rescued the lone survivor and Captain Phillips and yeah. Oh right. They Was did, it the same group? Same group. Yeah, all the same group who did all those things. So so they, they always have like an interesting sort of. They can drink like these guys. You know, which movie do you think based on your? Their stories is the most bullshit. Is it the uh, Zero Dark Thirty seemed pretty hour, uh, it, pretty uh, pretty uh, Zero Dark Thirty point. Captain Phillips or yeah Zero Dark Thirty seemed, seemed like a real thing. But I look I, Captain Phillips, they only come in at the end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're That's not true. there for the whole. That's movie. true. <laughs> yeah. I am the captain now. <laughs> I love that. Oh, movie. we heard the story how he just made that up and they kept it in. It was a fascinating interview. Really? No. No, exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. he was a nice man, but that's... Oh, Captain Phillips was a nice man. No, not. Captain no, was, Phillips, the guy the, who oh, played the pirate, Somalian who won actor, the, who won the Oscar. Oh, really? He did win the Oscar, correct? He did win. Is he still gigging? Where did he get nominated? Did he win the Maybe Oscar? Maybe he didn't win then? the Oscar. He Maybe nominated. he just got nominated because everybody realized how silly it would be for him to win the Oscar. Yeah, he played the uh, the. Yeah, the I, lead I, pirate. I know it was his first acting gig, but is he has he had a gig since? I, he's looking. Uh, I don't know. If he's had one. He might have played kind of a similar role. He's, he's had a, he's had a couple, but I do think that he thought this was going to leapfrog not, him not, more. Not kindergarten cop three. He really wasn't him. No. I am in charge now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go from being nominated for an Oscar? A lot of guys that fuck. Timothy Hutton won the Oscar in 1980 or 81. No, right. he won for the Oscar for Ordinary People, Best Supporting. Right. And it just kind of... But you got it. I mean, that's kind of like a crazy... Like, that's a sad story. But you kind of got to know your spot. When you're the guy who plays the Somali pirate in Captain Phillips, like, yeah. you kind of got to know that yeah, it's a but, special but case. But for him, it's a special case. And he's probably maybe doing some more foreign films and stuff like that. But what happens to, like, okay, so Marissa Tomei, we didn't hear about her forever. Right. And it's like she never lost her hotness or no. anything like that. And then when when she came back, it was like really like the wrestler before we saw her again. That's right. I think that's and, when she and, came back. And we were all like, fuck. Like, there's a few episodes of Seinfeld in there where mm -hmm. they did the whole thing. But we were like, shit, she did nothing forever after right. she won the Oscar. Yeah, she really, she still does look relatively good. She, she looks, looks amazing. She looks banging, man. Way more than her, relatively. Yeah. She well, looks you know, what really. Is she fifty yeah, five or something? Close. She's she's uh, yeah. She's I, I she's had, very cute. I had a thing for her. She did a movie with Robert Downey Jr. That I had a thing for her back when I was a teenager. Before we could access the movie? porn, it was like a romantic comedy called Remember. Being in love or some shit, but I I remember wanking off to it several times. Oh okay. yeah, I did too. To the other one, uh, what was the one? Uh, Can't buy me the love. Drug addict that was zero uh, with fucking James Spader. James Spader. Yes, I know. I'm butchering the name. He plays a drug addict, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, that, that was less when, than zero. That, oh. was, that was when he actually was a drug addict. Everyone yeah. forget, like this young generation see him as this suave. He's Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man. All yeah, he's Tony stuff. Stark. And he's, just and he's together, and he's like this and. And it's like, but we were, like, there was movies where it was like, oh, Robert Downey Jr., he was like Charlie Sheen it for a while there. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was wild. He was great in that movie, too. He played this fucking coke addict that he's being pimped out by some guy. Really good. <laughs> really less, good film. Less than zero. Yeah, it was like uh, eight, yeah, 87. When James Spader was this, like, ha he played, every time there was a rich douchebag, it was James Spader. The wrestler was supposed to be the return for Mickey Rourke, and it ended up being the return for Marissa Tomei. Yeah, but Mar Mickey Rourke had a he had a little bit of a run. He did little... Iron Man. I'm gonna I'm gonna na I'm gonna name drop really badly here, but like Brad Pitt plays my weatherman on my TV show. 
He's on like three episodes. That's amazing. Which is such a stupid, weird thing that happened. <laughs> but he's very. Is he accurate? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That's he all that that Comes on, he talks about. I just he just watched my comedy specials, and then he he asked that he asked Netflix asked me to interview him for something, and then he said as a favor he'd come and do my show, and then but like the only reason I'm named for that is he I said like who's your favorite actor? What actor do you? Want? And he said Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Was really? His, wow, really? Yeah, he said young Mickey Rourke was the best actor he ever saw. So there you go. It's amazing.